Hello and welcome back to The Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the brutal murders of elderly sisters Anna Louise Harris and Julie Belmar and the extremely controversial sentencing of those responsible. In 1987, 83-year-old Anna Harris and her sister, 87-year-old Julie Belmar, lived together in a three-bedroom house on Harvard Place in Indianapolis. The two women were known to be cautious as to who they let into their home. Julie had become quite frail and had some mobility issues that resulted in her needing a frame to assist her when walking. On Wednesday the 19th of August 1987, the two women were found in a pool of blood in the basement of their home. They had both been brutally stabbed to death. Julie had been stabbed ten times, the most serious being to her heart and lungs. However, five of the wounds were shallow knife tip wounds that a doctor would later describe as interrogation marks which were probably used to force Julie to give information about money and valuables in her home. Anna had been stabbed 15 times and brutally beaten. A murder investigation began and although progress was initially slow, a Crime Stoppers tip in December 1987 led to two arrests. First, there was 15-year-old Sean Lamont Rowe and then Ronald Lee Sanford Jr. who was just 13 years old at the time of the murders. Ronald lived next door to Anna and Julie and Sean lived a short distance away. For a period of time, both boys had attended Short Ridge Junior High School where they had become close friends despite being in different academic years. From newspaper reports at the time, it would seem that Sean was a well-mannered, likeable young man and Ronald was described as intelligent but was often in trouble with his teachers. Ronald's mother, Pamela, was a violent alcoholic. On the night of the murder, Pamela had left 13-year-old Ronald at home by himself in order to take a trip with her boyfriend. The day after the attack, when the ladies' bodies were being removed from the house, Ronald and his mother watched from their neighbouring house, with Pamela completely unaware that her young son was involved. Sean was arrested first and appeared in Marion Superior Court on Tuesday the 19th of January 1988. He held his mother's hand as he was charged with murder, robbery, burglary and confinement. A few days later, a visibly nervous Ronald was in court facing the same charges. He was accompanied by his father, who was upset and sobbing throughout the hearing. It needed to be established whether the boys should be tried as juveniles or adults. If they were tried as juveniles, the longest that they could be imprisoned would be until their 21st birthdays. After deliberations, in April 1988, it was confirmed that the two teenagers would be tried as adults meaning that the maximum sentence that they could receive would be life without the possibility of parole. Sean requested a plea bargain. He claimed that he was a bystander and that it was Ronald alone who had committed the murders. This is what Sean said had happened that day. He stated that on the 18th of August 1987, he and Ronald had knocked on the lady's front door to offer to cut their grass in order to earn some money to visit the Indiana State Fair. When Julie answered the door, she told them that she already had someone who cut the grass for her. Ronald then forced his way into the house and Sean followed. Ronald made Julie go to the basement and when he returned, Sean saw that he was holding a knife that was covered in blood. At this point, the two boys began searching the house for money and, when Anna returned home, they hid behind the kitchen door. When Anna entered the kitchen, Ronald threw her down the basement stairs. He then followed and once again emerged with a knife covered in blood. The boys then left the house. They went to Ronald's house next door where they burned his bloody clothes and hid the knife in his basement. They took just five dollars from the women. With that money, Sean then went and spent it at the Indiana State Fair. 
Sean agreed to testify against Ronald and in return for his testimony, he would only be prosecuted for assisting a robbery. All the other charges, which included murder, were dropped. In February 1989, it was reported in the press that the authorities do not believe that Roe participated in the August 18, 1987 stabbings. Sean further stated that Ronald had said he would kill Sean and his family if Sean had tried to leave. In March 1989, Ronald was advised to plead guilty to the double murder, robbery with bodily harm and burglary on the understanding that his age and lack of conclusive evidence would be taken into account. He then admitted the facts of the case as detailed by Sean and was scheduled for sentencing the following month. Ronald had an extensive criminal record despite his young age. This would then become an aggravating factor in his sentencing. His first run in with the law was when he was just 10 years old. He was arrested for theft, but these charges were later dropped when restitution was made. From then until his arrest for Anna and Julie's murders, he was found guilty of six criminal violations in juvenile court. They included theft, criminal mischief, battery, robbery and confinement. While Ronald awaited his sentence, Sean pled guilty to his charge of assisting in a robbery and he was sentenced to 5 years, 11 months and 30 days. He served just 2 years and 2 days of this sentence. On the 14th of April 1989, Ronald, who was now 15 years old, displayed no emotion as he was sentenced for his crimes. Two 50-year sentences for murder, a 50-year sentence of robbery with serious bodily injury, and a 20-year sentence for burglary. These sentences would run consecutively, giving Ronald a total sentence of 170 years in prison. Should his behaviour be good whilst incarcerated, he would be eligible for parole when he turns 100 years old, although on the Indiana State Prison website, his earliest parole date is shown as the 17th of December 2070, when he will be 96. Due to his young age at the time, Ronald was isolated from other inmates and still spends 23 out of 24 hours in a very small cell. Here, he has educated himself and reads extensively, seeing books as a way to allow him to escape the confines of his prison cell. His mother, who since has turned her life around and has not had an alcoholic drink since 1992, is now a regular visitor and a stable presence in his life. The debates as to what age juveniles have criminal responsibility and when they should be tried as adults have always been and continue to be hotly debated topics. While some argue that a crime is a crime and if someone is old enough to commit the crime they are old enough to take responsibility for it and be punished accordingly. Many would disagree with this on the basis that a child does not have the mental ability to plan execute and fully understand the consequences of their actions. Anna and Julie's murders were, without question, an abhorrent crime against two elderly, vulnerable members of society. Two perpetrators were present during the crime. One served two years in prison and the other, based primarily on the testimony of his accomplice, has served 33 years and, as it stands at the moment, in all likelihood, will remain incarcerated until the day he dies. This leads us to question not only the age of criminal responsibility, but also to question the validity of using the testimony of one of the accused who blames the other to definitively establish guilt. In 1999, eight years after he completed his two-year sentence for assisting in the robbery, Sean was sentenced to 20 years for child molestation and 1.5 years for incest. This sentence has now been completed as well. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has compelled states to review cases where children are tried as adults. There have been petitions to review Ronald's sentence in light of his age when he committed the crime and he remains hopeful that he may someday see the outside world once again. 
For those of you seeking more information about the case, two documentaries have been made by one of the UK's national treasures, former newscaster Sir Trevor MacDonald, OBE. He visited Indiana State Prison and interviewed Ronald, who was also referred to by the name of Ariel, Alpha, Romeo, Yankee, India, Lima. The TV documentaries aired in 2014 and 2018 and were called Inside Death Row with Trevor McDonald. Well, I hope you found that case interesting. As always, please add any comments, click like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. The prison that Ronald's in, Indiana State Prison, is the only prison in Indiana that allows the inmates to own cats. They are normally rescue cats and they are treated like royalty. Goodbye.